Hello everybody, my name is Tyler Valle, and this is Atelier <laughs> Sophie, The Alchemist of the Mysterious Book, developed by Gust and published by Koei Tecmo for the PlayStation 4 and Vita. Now if you're not familiar with the Atelier franchise that has now spanned across at least three generations of PlayStation consoles, don't worry, neither am I, though I have learned a few things from Wikipedia. Atelier is a series that fully embodies the moe genre of anime into a series of video games. Each game you play as a little girl who's attempting to become a powerful alchemist, but starts the game out as somewhat of a, well, kind of a loser. You're not very good at your job, but you have a lot of heart and the natural talent to become the alchemist of your dreams. And while there may be other stories that pop up along the way, the main driving force of your journey is to improve your alchemical skills and to become the best. Even though the main characters in the games change frequently, their personalities are relatively the same, though they are tweaked slightly to ensure the fanbase doesn't get too bored of them. Each girl is kind, lighthearted, earnest, loving, ditzy, and above all else, they're cute. Oh, probably shouldn't have called them cute, huh? I think this is what the Australians were doing when they rated Totori R18 for its high impact violence and sexual references. I'm sorry. Anyway, Atelier Sophie, and yes, that's how you pronounce it, Atelier, it's not Atelier, I don't care that's how they pronounce it in the game, it's Atelier, can be split into two sections. Adventuring and Alchemy. Adventuring consists of going out into the wilderness and gathering ingredients from the ground or from defeating monsters. Those ingredients can then be used in alchemy, allowing you to create anything from medicine to bombs. As you progress up your list of recipes, you'll reach certain recipes that, once completed, will continue the main story. There are plenty of different recipes to choose from and each have their own way of being unlocked in your book. Now each game is unique in the way that alchemy works, but they carry over many of the same elements. So while the actual alchemy and Sophie may be different, they are relatively the same. Once you start making things in alchemy, you'll choose the ingredients you want to use, and then it'll be taken to a grid where you'll place the items on said grid. While you're able to place any item in any square you want, you will get bonuses for certain actions, such as using the same color or grabbing as many large orbs as possible. But if any of your placements overlap, the originally placed ingredients bonuses will be nullified, so it's important to be careful where you place your items on that grid. When you complete alchemy recipes, you'll gain experience that go towards your alchemy level. It's a separate level for Sophie that allows her to create even better items and allows her to unlock bonus effects that can be placed on items you create. This can include things such as improve armor plus 10 or permanently increase HP by 10. This allows for even more creativity when you're working hard on your alchemy. The second half of the Atelier game is combat. Now combat in Atelier Sophie is your usual turn-based combat. There's nothing special about it, but honestly, that's just fine with me. I actually lament the fact that we don't have many turn-based JRPGs anymore, instead opting for a more action-style combat. And while that does work for certain games, I wish we could just go back to the days of slow, thought-out turn-based combat. There are plenty of party members for you to gather along your journey that will help you cut down any monster that stands in your way, but as long as you know what you're doing, you can get pretty far with your basic party. Arguably the strongest point of the Atelier franchise are the characters. Each one usually brimming with their own personality, they generally are the ones that drive Atelier forward, even if the gameplay can feel lackluster at times. However, I feel this is Atelier Sophie's weakest point. None of the characters in this game have allowed me to feel any semblance of a connection with them. I'm not sure what to do with them, nor am I aware of why I'm supposed to care about them beyond the game saying, these are Sophie's friends. Care about them, please. None of the character interactions feel natural, as every character feels like they're almost a stereotype of their supposed role within the game. Maybe it's just me. Like I said, I'm not too familiar with the franchise, so all I can really do is compare the characters in this game to characters in other JRPGs I am a fan of. The major problem I have is that every character acts so strangely. It's like they have no personality whatsoever. Let's just use the first five characters you really interact with in the game as an example. First, there's the main character, Sophie. Her personality is that of a kind-hearted scatterbrain. Though, we are only told this by the fact that there are a lot of books lying around our alchemist hut. She's a novice alchemist who's not very good at her job, but she's optimistic and seems like she wants to be depended on. Next, there's her friend, Monica. I got nothing. I literally have no idea why this character exists in the fashion she does. Her personality can be summed up as seems nice and is optimistic. Meaning she's almost exactly like Sophie, except for she's not an alchemist or scatterbrain. Now, I'm not a game developer. Admittedly, I'm far too lazy to develop my own game. I mean, I'm not so lazy that I'd work on a game for four years and then only release the tutorial level with no sign of an actual game release in sight, but I'm still pretty damn lazy. But if I were to make my own game, Monica's character design would be perfect for that of the class president archetype character. Granted, that's cliche. I'd rather see her as an uptight character who's friends with Sophie to make sure Sophie stays in line and achieves her goals of being a great alchemist. This character would be vastly different from Sophie instead of just being Sophie with even less character traits. Then there's Oscar. He looks like a dork and he talks about plants. And he thinks he can talk to plants. And... Hmm. I mean, he's got a hot mom. That's about it. Fourth up is Julio, another character who has no personality who joins your party for no real reason. He's a knight who's been searching for an alchemist to help the kingdom that he hails from. He finds Sophie and her friends, by coincidence, and decides he's going to help her with her alchemy for some reason. His character traits consist of that of being quiet and not having very good motivation for following a little girl into the forest at night. And finally up, there's Placha. She's a book with no memories who eventually turns into a doll with no memories. 
As you discover and complete alchemy recipes, they are written within Plotch's pages, which slowly allow her to gain her memories again. But due to not having memories, her character is sort of that of a blank slate, with tiny bits of character shining through every once in a while. She can be enjoyable, but it's usually just her being upset about people thinking a book that talks is weird. Now I gotta say it, one of the reasons why I enjoy Japanese games as much as I do is that many of them are games that are driven forward by their characters, rather than the action driving the characters forward like in many western titles. Games like Yakuza and Valkyria Chronicles are fun and filled with action, sure, but it's the characters that people love. You may be able to remake Yakuza with a completely new cast and know the samurai ones don't count, and it could work. But to steal a term from wrestling fans, the moment you were playing that remake and you saw the reemergence of Kiryu, you would mark out. That is the strength of Japanese games. Atelier Sophie's characters just aren't three-dimensional enough for me to care about, and that's a shame. The story, what little there really is, plays out almost exactly like you think it would. Though if you've been watching or reading any of my reviews, you should know by now that I'm not one to talk about stories that much, because I assume that many of you are like me and would prefer to go into a game story completely blind. Honestly, one of the best things I can say about Atelier Sophie is that this is one of the best looking games of the year due to the stylization of its graphics. Though that shouldn't be a surprise to anyone who's familiar with Gus' work, they always make sure their games look great. And Koei Tecmo, while there have been a few hiccups on the PlayStation 4 and Vita, they're usually fully capable of producing fantastic games with the hardware they're provided. Now, if only they could transfer over that talent to their PC ports. Even though this video is only running at 720p at 30fps, this is a limitation that was placed on us by the video capture feature of the PlayStation 4, and soon, with the arrival of my capture card, will no longer be an issue. Let it be known that Atelier Sophie runs at 1080p at a smooth as silk 60fps. Now, I'm willing to say the Atelier franchise may just not be for me. I'd much prefer my JRPGs to be fantastical journeys through fantastical worlds, where I have to grind for hours, if not days, to get ready to fight the big bad villain while their theme chants their name in the background. Atelier Sophie is more like that of a slice-of-life anime with combat and magic. But while I may not be the target audience for this game, I can't deny that it's well-made and it's fun to play. If you like the previous Atelier games, you're gonna like this one, I guarantee it. I'd almost recommend it to you solely based on the fact that it runs so well and it looks so good, which becomes even more frustrating because there are so many games that are released today that truly can't push the PlayStation 4 and Vita hardware to their full potential. Atelier Sophie gets an 8 out of 10. When it comes to the good, the only word I can use to describe Sophie is beautiful. Oh, and the game looks amazing too. <laughs> and the combat is turn-based, which I really love. And finally, alchemy is challenging to do well, and it makes you feel great when you get it just right. When it comes to the bad, there's not a lot bad I can really say about this game. Most of what I have a problem with is completely subjective. I'd much prefer to play a JRPG with your average go fight the big bad storyline than what I got in this game. And the characters are all pretty bland in my opinion, though once again, you may totally disagree and that's fine. Atelier Sophie is a good game, it's just not a game for me personally, but I gotta admit I am interested in alchemy now. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go and try to make bombs in my kitchen with a cooking pot, some plants, and a rock, so let's wrap this up. My name is Tyler Vaya and make sure you guys check out NicheGamer.com for all your gaming news, previews, and reviews. And make sure to subscribe to us here on YouTube as I slave away tirelessly to provide you with new video content and y'all have a great day.